Hi there, welcome to TD Cat Tech. Today I'm looking at this. This is a, a smart plug. Nothing more, nothing less. And it's a relatively cheap smart plug as well. I think so far this year, 2022, seems to have been the year for me of uh, a couple of smart devices. I've uh, invested in a uh, weather station to satisfy my weather geekiness. And I've also invested in a few smart plugs. I've had uh, some speakers and cameras and stuff since about 2016. So that's nothing new. But this side of it, I haven't really touched before. So I'm going to take you uh, around this device. I'm going to get it connected to my phone. And I'll just have a look through the app on the phone. Now these are, as I say, budget ones. I did look for other devices with true full-on en energy monitoring and things, but they're all out of stock at the moment. They're really hard to come by. These are the ones I thought, well, I'll give them a go, see how they are. They do do a degree of energy monitoring, but it's not full-on, and I think also it can be sort of deleted or wiped quite easily but they do have energy monitoring they do show you how much energy is being used on the plug at the time and they do sort of track it over over days and stuff like that so that was kind of important to me because i love that sort of information and these are part of the two year i think it's is it t-u-y-a two two year i don't know how you pronounce it that brand uh two year are a chinese company and they are enormous in smart devices absolutely they are a global leader in smart devices i don't know why they don't sell these under that particular name they sell these under the whole kind of smart life in fact i don't even know if they're sold with uh, they're probably just packaged by somebody else but the app that you use with these is the smart life app and it's a really nice app actually the software is fantastic i was well impressed i thought it would be a bit kind of basic a bit difficult to navigate not at all. It is really nicely put together, simple to use, functionality is just great. Anyway, I'll show you a bit more of that in a second. So anyway, it's a smart plug, right? It You can turn it on and off with a button, you plug it into a wall, and you can turn it on and off with a phone. <laughs> That's all it does. But let's get this one connected up. I'm going to bring in my uh, rather yellowed multi socket here because i need to plug this in for the first time and uh, i've never never connected this one i do already have seven other devices well it's going to roll away is it i'm going to do have other seven other devices connected so far but i've got my smart life app down the bottom here and uh, it's going to go into here and these are my devices which i won't turn off at the moment because i've got four specifically for this room oh just just to say i mean it, this is just a personal thing really my main purpose for buying smart plugs was not to have sort of convenience in my life though i have added one for kettle because it is quite nice to fill it and then just be able to go in the morning and it boils downstairs while you are still in bed that's quite nice. But that's not the reason I bought these. I bought these for energy saving. So it's so that I can turn off all these at the touch of a button or touch of four buttons or set up a scene. I'll show you that as well. Setting up a scene to um, turn off all these at once and really just kick back on the 40 to 60 watts of usage that I would otherwise have all night where I'm not doing anything, really. Uh, I mean, yes, I could turn them off at the wall, but I never do. So the fact that I've got these plugged in means I can turn off. And yes, the smart plugs themselves use about one watt of power to be able to be accessed, but that's much better than the 40 to 60 watts that I would otherwise be using. That's my main purpose, but your the, the reason you get them will change. I've got another one here, turns on a light in my son's bedroom in the morning. Times It's got a timer on it to turn on at 7 a.m. But <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going off track here. What I wanted to do initially was add this, add this new device, right? So when you add one of these, there are... The, the method that they su suggest is is rubbish. It doesn't work at all from what I've found. So I'm just going to go into here and I'm going to add a device and add it manually because it says searching for nearby devices. It never comes up with it. So just add it manually. In this case, I'm going to be adding a socket, a Wi-Fi socket, and I can just plug this in here now. And you'll see that that starts flashing, which means that's ready to be added. And I can just add a socket can go next on here and then I can say power on device for 10 seconds yes I've already done all this because it's 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 blinking look this is this is blinking here blinking quickly so go on to here the in, it is it is blinking quickly yes so now this is adding a device 
And this will take a few seconds. I will leave the camera running. I won't edit this so you can see. Let's just hold this up here so you can see the status of the light as well at the same time. You can get this in real time, how long you can expect. Look, that's already gone solid, which is good. And it's registering it on the cloud. And that's it. It's added. Simple as that. Now, the first time you do it, you will have to enter your Wi-Fi details in. And if you do want to redo one, well, I'll show you that in a second, but you can press and hold that down for five seconds and that will reset and then it will start flashing again and you can go through the process again. But I am going to delete this and re-add it and I'll show you why. So let's just go into this smart plug now. Oh no, sorry, click on done first. So here's the, here's the plug and I can see that in my list at the top here. So I can just turn this plug on and off now from directly from the phone. There we are, power off. Power on. Simple. So that's done. But here's the problem. And hopefully it, this will demonstrate the problem to you. So if I go into the electricity usage on this, well, look, January, 2.6 kilowatt hours. What? Why have I got 2.6 kilowatt hours of electricity used in January already? I don't understand. Every plug that I've uh, that I've plugged in has already had some usage on here, or read already sort of in the system. Look, it's already got look, it's got it graphed. Can you see the display? Is it a little bit bright? That I'm not too sure whether that's a little bit too bright. Um, hopefully you can see that. Look, it's it's already graphed 2.6 kilowatts of usage, and I've just plugged the thing in. I don't understand. So what I can do now is I can go out of here, and when I'm in this. So when I'm in the smart plug here, in this main section, I can edit it at the top here. And these, this, oh, these are the settings for this particular device. And I can remove the device, disconnect and wipe the data. That's what you need to do. So I'm gonna disconnect the device. Yes. So it's now gone back to factory settings, turned off and it'll turn back on again and should start flashing again, which it has done. There we go, it's flashing. So I'm now gonna add the device again, going through here, going through here. Indicators blinking, yes. Is it blinking quickly? Sorry, it's just off the screen there. Yes, it's blinking quickly, and it's going to do the, exactly the same thing as it did before. So I just hold up the plug here so you can see it. We've got some stuff dangling off that socket. This is. Again, I'm doing this in real time. I'm not going to edit this so you can see exactly what the plug does. So it's now gone off the light, but I think that was the last status of the plug, even though it says it's done a factory reset. Registering on the cloud. And there we go. Device added successfully. Now, if I go into that plug, oh, so I do it every time I do this. So we've now got our plug. It's currently off. I can just turn it on. There we are. And if I go into electricity now, Zero. So we have zero. It's completely reset. Don't know why that's the case, why they do that, why they have that sort of initial amount on them, but that's how you get rid of it and disconnect and wipe the data. If you, if you want to wipe your data, you can do exactly the same thing. All right, so moving that the plug out of the way, because we're just going to be looking <clears throat> a little bit more at the app now. I'm going to try and get my screen brightness set at a decent level here. And I can edit the name of the plug and go into here and I can just change the name, make it something more sensible because obviously Smart Plug 8 isn't much use. You might want to call this. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll call this Light 1 or something. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then you can put it in a location because, of course, it's assuming you have some kind of home set up here and then this will put it in a location. You can see in my particular house, I've just got stuff in the studio and in, in Hugo's room, in Mars's room and in the kitchen. Uh, but I'm going to so I'm going to put that I'm going to put it in the studio for now. And. You've got all device information. You can do all the automation stuff through here. You can uh, add a review and all this sort of usual rubbish. Uh, you can share the device as well. So I've added in my partner on to this. She has an account as well. And I can add sharing onto here. And you can see that that's her there. So I can just add that in and the plug will immediately show up on her app as well, which is great. It's worked perfectly. I mean, the sharing, you could just remove someone or add someone. You can add them for a certain period of time. And uh, I'm not going to do that now because she'll wonder why a plug's popped up on. She'll get a notification on her watch telling her that a plug's been added. And that's just going to confuse her. So I'm not going <laughs> to do that now. 
and you can get uh, information on your network. You can get information. Uh, you can get, sorry. You can get updates for the device, so sort of firmware and stuff like that. And the, but this is the main area that uh, you would turn stuff on and off. The th one thing I don't really like is the fact that you have them all here, and you can so easily press this button. So I can so easily just tap that by accident and click it off. And I really didn't want to do that. If I look at my studio now, uh, go into my studio one here. This is power on, and I'm going to leave it because I'm recording on this at the moment. I cannot. If I turn, if I tap this. This whole video is ruined, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that, but I am going to go into electricity usage, and you can see that I'm currently using 103.9 watts, 576 milliamps, total electricity for this room. This, again, missing the 20th. Why is it missing the 20th? Don't know where the 20th's gone, but look, you can see how much. See, I hadn't, this, this little 2.3 at the start here, this is because I left it with its initial settings in and didn't delete it out. I wish I'd deleted that setting out. This is the kind of average amount I use per day in this room. So far today, I've used 0.23 of a kilowatt. And I love this sort of information. I love this type of stuff. You also have the option of adding scenes and scenes are where these things come into their own. So this is the one I've got set, set up to turn the light on in uh, Hugo's bedroom every morning. So this is just a wake up light and these are just if and then statements. It is super powerful. I mean, if any of you who have ever done any kind of coding will know that an if statement or even just Excel, an if and then, so statement is go it's one of your best friends. It's used everywhere. and simply if schedule seven o'clock every day then switch hugo light onto on easy and you can add multiple conditions and you can say when any condition is met or you can say when all when all conditions are met and you can do multiple things you can turn on multiple lights but it's much more powerful than that so if i go in and i add a scene i'm going to add click on here now to add a you can either do a tap to run, so you can just have a scene <clears throat> where you say, for example, uh, let me just say I'm going to launch. I'm just going to have a little thing that says little creates a little button, so I can just tap it and run it. And what it, what it's going to do is it's going to run the device that I just added. Which one was it? So light one at the top here. I'm going to switch it. And I'm going to, you can just toggle it or you can have it off or usually just, just set it to go on. So if it's off, it'll go on. Um, and next. And save that. It gives it a silly name by default, but you can change that. So all that, all this will do now. Okay, I've added it to my home screen and we've got now got a button at the top, which should turn on this plug. So if I... Go into here. I mean, yes, that does the same as these, but I can set up a task to do multiple at the same time. So there we go. It's just turned it on. I don't have one to turn it off, but I could have set that to toggle instead. So I can go back into this scene and I can uh, edit this and I could say, well, I don't want this job to do to do this. I want it to reverse the switch, uh, which I'm going to just save there and save that's saved now so if i go back to my home screen i could do it from there as well so this now will should toggle this switch instead whoa this is going well so there we go it's it's reversed it and it's turned it back on again easy as that and you can do all sorts of things with this with the scenes it isn't just a touch you know a tap to run it's much much more advanced than that so when the weather changes you can you have it so weather sunset sunrise change of wind speed humidity change of temperature so you can turn certain things on when the temperature drops below a certain amount and the sunset and sunrise will adjust and you can offset the su sunset and sunrise as well so you can say well actually sunset isn't sunrise isn't when i want it i want it just one hour after sunrise and when location changes so it can track your location don't really want this app tracking my location all the time thank you very much but you can so as soon as you walk out the house it turns something on so you can have devices that are off all the time when you're in the house but as soon as you walk out the house it powers up your security cameras or something like that the options are so variable based on these few things here and then schedule wise just a standard schedule which would 
repeats every so often when the device status changes. So let's just change this to like one. So when the power drops to a certain amount or goes up to a certain amount, is equal to, less than, or there's so much you can do with this. If you are willing to kind of think about it and then put in multiple conditions, if you have, as I say, if you've ever used if and then statements in, a, in a, an Excel document, you know the power of them and you can just do so much based on these few simple things in the app to get the switches to do exactly what you want. The power of this is all in this software. The app is superb. It's reliable and it works really well, easy to set up and easy to um, kind of just administer, I suppose, because it does take a bit of initial setup. You've got to think to yourself, what do you want these things to do for you? The power's definitely here. You can do loads with them. I would never use when the weather changes. I don't want to do anything when the weather changes. I really just want tap to runs to turn everything off and turn everything on. That will do most of the time. Yes, I'm using a schedule on a light. That's about it. But the option's there if you want it. Anyway, there we go. Hope you found that useful. A quick look. Not that quick, maybe. But um, a look at this smart plug from Tuya. I'll put links to these in the... Um, in the description on Amazon, I'll, I mean, I've, I've bought sort of eight of these so far. Uh, they are £35 for four at time of recording, so really not that expensive. Of course, you've got an initial outlay, always going to be the case. And yes, this is something that's going to then just be running continuously in your house, which might put you off, I suppose, because you might think, well, I don't really want a device that's going to then, you know, what's the point of having a device that's meant to sort of save you power that's got to run and use power? I can see that. But um, yeah, don't use too much. And uh, they can provide really good info that lets you make kind of d educated decisions on power usage and when to turn things off and how much you, you know. For, I'll give you an example. Just before I go, I'll give you an example. So I got that one plugged into my kettle. I now know that we use about 0.6 of a kilowatt hour per day just boiling our kettle for whatever, for tea, for coffee, for putting into some pasta or something like that. 0.6 of a kilowatt hour on average per day. That means that boiling the kettle at time of recording, based on our current electricity costs, is about £40 a year. That will increase to £60 based on actual electricity costs in the UK next year. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot of money just to boil a kettle, if you think about it. So you can make decisions off that. You can say, well, do we want to cut back on that? Do we, is it better to boil it? You know, these are the sort of things that matter. Just good energy usage and good data. Having that data available is just great. Anyway, it's just me geeking out on this stuff. I love it. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to buy one of these, as I say, links in the description and uh, use those links <clears throat> if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.